Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, from me, Guy Munson, to our regular six-minute strategy summary. The great tug of war between inflation and recession makes tracking the global economy remarkably difficult today. A mild US recession is now our base case, with US Q2 GDP numbers registering a decline of 0.9% this quarter and 1.6% in the previous quarter. This adds to the spate of gloomy news across the world. A worse than anticipated slowdown in China, the IMF expect GDP numbers now at 3.3% for 2022, well below Chairman Xi's hopes of 5.5%. And further negative spillovers from the war in Ukraine continue to impact Europe, particularly the risks of a cessation in Russian gas supplies. In this tug of war, just as economies are slowing, the Federal Reserve and other central banks are continuing to aggressively raise rates. This week's widely trailed 75 basis point rise in the US was approved unanimously and takes us to broadly neutral territory. We have the Bank of England next week and expect a 50 basis point rise to 1.75% from Andrew Bailey. We will consider what this tug of war between inflation and recession means for your portfolio and our rest allocation in the slides ahead. Let's begin by looking at those US rates in a little bit more detail. The dark blue line, the federal funds rate, rising to two and a quarter to two and a half percent after this week's rate rise. That dotted blue line plots our scenario going forwards. Another 50 basis point rise in September, 25% in November, and then a pause. And if the Federal Reserve is convinced that the inflation rate is coming back to target, say somewhere around 3%, then expect actual rate cuts going forward from there as they pivot from inflation suppression to supporting growth. Our scenario two, a stickier inflation rate requiring higher rates, less likely now as the economy slows, and scenario three, a financial crisis, much less likely now that investment markets are stabilizing as we've seen over the last few months. All of this, of course, is in the form of a mild recession, a jobful, if you like, recession, reflecting strong labour markets in the US, UK and around the world. In addition, of course, savings rates were very generous during the pandemic, so that means investors have built up a cushion. Uh, the US personal savings rate on the left spiking up almost above 30% as government transfers boosted bank balances. And on the right, you can see those bank balances, M1 demand deposits, almost three trillion in the US, higher than the trend rate. That provides a sizable cushion. In Europe, a similar message, the purchasing manager indicators beginning to roll over as sentiment declines. Remember, above 50 is growth, below 50 is contraction. And you can see that dark blue line, the euro area, falling now to 49.4 contraction for the first time absent the pandemic in the last decade. So we are looking at a considerable European slowdown and potential recession. On the right hand side, inflation continues to surge higher. We saw a particularly uncomfortable print in Germany this week, German CPI at 8.5%, well ahead of expectations. And of course, Europe is facing a particular energy challenge. In the left-hand panel, I show you German natural gas prices peaking at 170 again, almost a seven-fold increase on the sort of numbers that we saw pre the Ukrainian war. On the right-hand panel, I've shown that breakdown of gas supplies in a bit more detail from the latest IMF report. They show declining flow of Russian gas pipelines to the US as a whole. That's the five key pipelines, in particular that red one, Nord Stream 1. Look at the scale of those overall declines. Finally, in China, other growth challenges mount, particularly from COVID-19. In that left-hand panel, I've shown the COVID cases and deaths in blue and green in the height of the pandemic in 2020 and in the last few months. And plotted against those, the PMIs, the purchasing manager indicators of manufacturing output and supplier delivery times. And you can see every time there's a peak in COVID cases, you get a big drawdown in manufacturing activity and a sharp worsening in delivery times. And this is putting huge pressure on Chinese growth. In addition, there are problems in the real estate market, as we've talked about in, in earlier reports. Uh, real estate prices now on a median level falling over the average of 100 cities in China. And this is putting immense pressure on the financing of Chinese property companies. You can see the Chinese high yield bond index peaking out an extraordinary 25.4% yield. All this, though, is changing in its impact on financial markets. Weak economic data is actually becoming good financial data. 
And you can see on the left-hand side that global equities have rallied quite substantially from their lows in mid-June, early July. The world index is actually up 4.7% over the last month. Why is this? Well, for three reasons. First of all, the US dollar and US Treasury bond yields are falling, particularly T-bonds. That means that valuations get a little bit more support as bond yields begin to fall. Secondly, on the, the left-hand panel of slide 8, a substantial derating in equities has taken out that bubble pricing that we saw in the pandemic period. World equities in dark blue, PEs one year forward, US in light blue, Europe in dark green, all now below their 20-year average in terms of valuation. So more reasonable numbers for investors. On the right-hand panel, the third and final reason investor sentiment was exceptionally negative over the last few weeks and months. This is from the Bank of America Global Fund Manager Survey, which shows the net percentage of investors taking higher than normal risk levels. Uh, this number was at an all-time low, more risk-averse even than the great financial crisis or the low point of the pandemic. So for investors, this means better equity markets. We, though, still are a little cautious. We'd like to see a little bit more economic data before we nudge back our small underweight and begin to participate more aggressively in the rally. So I hope this gives you some idea of how the forces of inflation and recession are interacting to influence financial markets and your portfolio. I'll be seeing you next in a month, so have a happy August. Thank you.